William Burgess was a Victorian architect, largely forgotten today, except in sort of architectural circles. A very eccentric, slightly on the margin character. His, you know, his work is extremely uh, elaborate and, and fantastical. Fond of puns, fond of, uh, of horseplay, and one of the greatest eccentrics probably ever to be put in charge of a building project. Burgess was one of the most extraordinarily creative and inventive architects of the mid-19th century. He becomes the pet of the richest man in England, the Marquis of Butte. And he commissioned in the 1870s William Burgess to rebuild Cardiff Castle. Not only Gothic revival interiors, but only Islamic interiors and Chinese influences to create these extraordinarily rich uh, and important interiors. William Burgess is generally referred to as the one and only pre-Raphaelite architect. He had very strong ties with the William Morris circle. So he's part of this great artistic kind of milieu in Holland Park, surrounded by all these artists. So they all moved within these circles. The Gothic Revival looks like an aesthetic movement, and it is, but it's linked, indeed it's driven by a kind of ethic and this belief that somehow the recreation of medieval art will help reform the church, the university, and society as a whole. For Burgess, the medieval past was not a dark period. It was truly a period where colour was prominent in medieval manuscripts and stained glass and this shows very well in his work. From the 60s onwards, mid 60s onwards, he was in charge of major restoration or construction projects uh, like Cork Cathedral and later on Cardiff Castle and also Worcester College Chapel here in Oxford. Worcester College Chapel is in some respects a typical example because it is full of fun and it's full of colour and it's full of meaning. If you look on all the bench ends you can see that the, here are the animals. This is meant to be a, a te deum celebrating creation and creation includes a peculiarly grumpy hippo and a dodo. And you also find lovely little in jokes so that the provost, the head of the college's stall, has God written on it. He's somebody who's already engaged in a sort of process of rather more creative play. In the 1850s and 1860s, Burgess did very little architectural work. He was primarily a designer and he decorated pieces of furniture. The Great Bookcase was a very special object for William Burgess. He designed it for his own rooms in Buckingham Street in London. And he moved to Tower House in 1876, and the library was designed around the cabinet. In 1862, he was asked to uh, design the medieval court of the London International Exhibition. The Great Bookcase, I don't think, was made for the International Exhibition, but it's shown an exhibition, which was a very important but often forgotten exhibition. Now, by 1931, this sort of stuff was being destroyed or, you know, completely disregarded. We were very fortunate here in that we had Kenneth Clark uh, as a young keeper, and he made the decision to buy this bookcase, and he paid £50 for it. For 80 years, it was away from the museum, and when we finally decided to redo this room back in 2016, we brought it back as the centrepiece of the new D.D. Wigmore Gallery of 19th Century Art. We tend to look at his work today and tend to dismiss it as being very kind of just decorative, but actually when you dig into it, as Charlotte has done in her book, you know, you really see how much thinking was behind that. You know, he was an extraordinarily well-connected person and that is reflected in his work, but it's not always obvious. He commissioned 13 different artists to paint the surface of the bookcase with the most dazzling colours. When I first saw it, I was completely overwhelmed and fascinated by all the stories this object had to tell. Its eight painted panels sort of relate the Christian and pagan origins of the arts of painting, sculpture, architecture and poetry. In the panel dedicated to Christian poetry, uh, we see the poet Dante dreaming of his beloved Beatrice, uh, who is dressed in green, red and white, 
which are the exact colors that are used in the Divine Comedy to describe the virtues of uh, Beatrice. So you can see that uh, Burgess read Dante's text very closely. The inside of the bookcase is also painted with tropical bird's head by Henry Stacy Marks. And we actually have drawings of these heads kept in Ruskin's teaching collection in the Ashmolean print room which holds an amazing collection of pre-Raphaelite drawings, including many works by artists who contributed to this bookcase. We have found out by carrying very precise pigment analysis on this bookcase that Burgess and his artist friends actually used modern pigments to depict all these stories. So this great bookcase is truly a crucial document about the Victorian's passion for the colours of the past in the age of modern industrial colour. I'm confident that this project is going to generate more interest in William Burgess and put him back on the map of Victorian art. An extraordinary character, you know, so he deserves to be better known, deserves to have a wider audience. A huge variety of people are being drawn to focus on Burgess and what that's going to do is enable us to understand Burgess as a whole.